In our studies of Chapter 3, From Genes to Proteins, we'll consider in this lesson the subject of DNA sequencing. In our reaction, we need to include all of the components needed for successful DNA synthesis. That will include the template DNA, this will be single-stranded DNA, and this will be the segment of DNA, the sequence of which we want to determine. We also need a short primer DNA. This will anneal to the template and it provides DNA polymerase that 3' OH it needs in order to build on. Of course we have to have DNA polymerase, the enzyme that synthesizes the DNA, and we need the substrates for the polymerase, the 4-deoxynucleotide triphosphates. We're also going to include 4-dideoxynucleotide triphosphates, each one of these carrying a different fluorescent label. A dideoxynucleotide is illustrated at the top of the screen here. As you can see, not only is it a 2' deoxy, it's also a 3' deoxy. Hence the name dideoxy, and that's why this process is referred to as dideoxy DNA sequencing. So let's see how that reaction works. We start with the single strand DNA to be sequenced. We include in the reaction all of the components. The primer will anneal to the template strand and DNA polymerase will extend that primer by adding nucleotides that base pair with the template strand. At some point synthesis will stop. So why does the reaction stop? It's because we've incorporated one of these dideoxynucleotides. Remember, in these dideoxynucleotides, we're missing that 3' OH, and we need that as the nucleophile to attack the incoming nucleotide. So once a dideoxynucleotide has been incorporated, synthesis stops. So how do you know which dideoxynucleotide it is? That's the purpose of the different fluorescent labels. In a given reaction, we have multiple copies of the template strand and multiple copies of the primer. For any given synthesis, the DNA polymerase will bind the, to the pair of the primer and the template and extend that and randomly incorporate one of those dideoxynucleotides. In the end, we'll have a, have a set of newly synthesized DNA chains that differ by one nucleotide and terminate with a different labeled dideoxynucleotide. A detector connected to the sequencer will read the fluorescence and identify the tag and therefore the sequence of nucleotides. The computer provides a printout of that sequence of DNA. It still must be manually checked to confirm it, but it's a very efficient process of DNA sequencing. In the next video lesson, we'll look at the components of a typical PCR reaction and see how that works. We'll also look at restriction endonucleases and see how they function.